One of the most consequential scientific discoveries of the last century is that the universe, everything we can see and everything we ever will be able to see, had a beginning. This beginning happened 13.8 billion years ago when the universe came into being in an unimaginably hot and dense initial state, after which it expanded and cooled, evolving into the universe of stars and galaxies that we see today. You might have heard of it. It's called the Big Bang, a term coined by astronomer Fred Hoyle, who ironically was a staunch opponent of the idea. The name Big Bang evokes an explosion, as if everything in the universe were flying apart from some central point out there somewhere in space. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the Big Bang happened everywhere at once. It is a boundary in time, a moment at which an infinitely large space springs into existence. This initial singularity is a point in time where all the laws of physics we understand cease to have meaning, and before which time itself ceases to exist. So if that's how it happened, there's a bigger question to ask here. Why? What caused our universe to come into being? The first cause, that which moves without being moved, in the words of Aristotle. The problem with the standard Big Bang is that it provides no guidance toward answering this central existential question. It also provides no answers to the related questions of why is the universe so big? Why is it so old? And while we're at it, why are we here at all? These basic properties of the cosmos remain stubbornly mysterious, and it's easy to feel lost in the dark. But there is a new theory that sheds a little light, and I'd like to tell you about it. Cosmic inflation is a theory for what happened before the Big Bang, before our universe came into being. First, the theory states that our observable universe is but a tiny patch of an infinite bubble universe, which itself is one of an infinity of other universes. All of these are continuously pulled apart by the exponentially self-reproducing space-time of inflation. I want you to imagine this inflationary universe as cold, very cold, nearly at absolute zero in fact, and empty of everything except the energy of empty space. The cosmos of inflation is a quantum mechanical one in which new space is created from nothing at an ever multiplying pace. This quantum cosmos may be enormously old and unimaginably vast, an infinity of infinities forever hidden from our view by inescapable laws of causality. But we can observe its quantum echoes in our universe today as the seeds of all structure, stars and galaxies and clusters of galaxies, extending hundreds of millions of light years across the cosmos. These primordial echoes are imprinted in the relic light left over for the Big Bang itself, called the cosmic microwave background, which has been measured with exquisite precision by satellites such as the European Space Agency's Planck mission and NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe. Strangely enough, Although this vast self-reproducing cosmos generates new universes infinitely into the future, theorems show that it must be finite into the past. There is, theoretically, a point at which it started. Inflation does not dispense with the necessity of a beginning, but it does push that initial singularity far into the murky past of the eternal multiverse, with all traces of its nature infinitely diluted by expansion, lost forever yet still felt like the grin of the Cheshire cat. Now I know what you're thinking. How does this answer any of our existential questions? How does this help us find our place within the unimaginably vast reaches of the inflationary multiverse? Carl Sagan called our planet a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam, a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. In inflation, we see even that vast arena is itself a tiny world in a bottle, one among uncountable others. Luminaries of physics such as Steven Weinberg and Leonard Susskind have responded to this paradoxical and ultimately unknowable cosmos by suggesting that our universe is fine-tuned for our existence and that our anthropic cosmos is in some way special, and by extension, so are we. This is probably a false hope. 500 years ago, 
Nicholas Copernicus liberated the Earth from its privileged position in the cosmos and freed it to live among the stars. The Renaissance philosopher Giordano Bruno took the idea further, that we are in a cosmic sense, not special, but ordinary. God is infinite, Bruno wrote. So his universe must be too. He is glorified not in one, but in countless suns. Not in a single earth, a single world, but in a thousand thousand. I say in an infinity of worlds. In inflation, we see Bruno's infinity of worlds extended to an infinity of universes. In this infinity of infinities, our species is tiny and ephemeral. All we have is each other, and we must make our own meaning knowing that we are accidentally and fortunately here as witnesses to this profoundly beautiful world for a few brief moments. For me, that is enough.